Hello everybody, Neil here from ASCAD Services. I've not done a video for a little while, I've been a bit busy, so I apologise for that. But this one reared its head the other day, and it's, uh, let me get rid of that in a minute. One of my customers asked me, they wanted a specific joint in their bracing, and this is the joint here. He asked me if you can do it. Well, yes, you can do it, because there it is. Okay. But it's not obvious how you get to this. And uh, sometimes when using the connection vault, a bit of lateral thinking goes a long way. But sometimes some joints is just a case of try it, make some changes, see what effect it has. And hopefully you can get the joint you require. Because if I put this in from scratch, and it's this one I used, tube connection with sandwich plates. I could have used this one, it would have done pretty much the same, except that is uh, an additional connection. What that means is I can actually put the joint in between a column and a base plate and it will weld to both and also the diagonal brace. I haven't got a base plate in this instance, so I'm going to use just this one here, tube connection with sandwich plates. So we click on the joint, left click, and you can see now we're being prompted on the command line and it says select the objects and in this case it says select the column. It might say sometimes just it might say select the beam and you're wondering well hang on which one's which. The rule of thumb for people new to advanced still is when it asks you to make the first selection in a joint is generally the object that will not be shortened by the joint. So obviously the column's not going to be shortened this is going to be shortened to connect to the column but the column itself won't be shortened so in this case it gave us the clue select the column so we left click on this and then we either press enter or my mouse is set up right click is enter so I right click nothing seems to have happened but the prompts have changed and it says select object again but now it's saying select the diagonal beam even if this was horizontal in this particular joint it would still say the diagonal beam um, but it is the same beam. So I'm using this one as a diagonal beam. I left click again and then you can press enter as I said. In my case I right click to accept it and it puts the joint in and we get this joint. It looks nothing like this joint but it's just a case of parameters. We need to change some parameters. So if we have a look at the moment, I'm going to go to 2D wireframe for a sec. You can see that the gusset plate here as a chamfer cut. It's got some relief cuts in here as well. But it doesn't look very nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first off I'm going to reshape the gusset plate. To get back into the joint properties we can either click on any part of the joint, right click and a select advanced joint properties. For you new guys it's no good just double clicking. All that's done is brought me up the properties of this one plate and you'll see that a lot of it is going to be greyed out. That's because the plate is controlled by the joint. We know it's a joint, it's got a joint box. So I can click on any part of the joint and right click and select advanced joint properties. I can click on the joint box and right click and select advanced joint properties or I can double click on the joint box itself and the joint properties will come up. So let's have a look at the gusset plate shape to start with and we're going to make some uh, minor changes on that. And the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to turn off this cut. It says here look number four, size for 10 mil. So if we make that zero, that's gone. Okay. In fact, there's still a tiny one there. Never noticed that before. But anyway, we'll probably ignore that. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do, instead of one chamfer here, I'm going to say two chamfers. And what it's done is cut this off across the top and it's parallel with the sandwich plates. If I wanted this to protrude, I've got this here, distance layout by projection. I could also have total. I've got projection. If I go into gusset place parameters, 
I can put offsets on this plate according to this diagram. See, number two, there look. Number three, there look. Number four, number five. Okay, so I'm just going to put 10 mil in here just to demonstrate. You can see that. There it is, it puts this in here. Okay. I'll make that zero. Uh, the other thing I can do is I can change the height of this. I change this look to total parameters and then I've got the height 6, 155, let's see that's 200 and you can see then, okay, you can see then I've increased the length. If I go back to projections there look, it's going to make a right mess of it. <laughs> probably don't want to be doing that. Let me just undo that a sec. Okay, so there we are. So we can change by the plate shape by total length or by projection. So I can't remember what that was. 150, 155 was it? Okay. The next thing we're going to do is have a look at these bolts. They look a bit of a mess. So let's go to bolts and welds and you can see 20 mil bolts, a bit overkill. I'm going to make these 16s. There we are. And you'll notice that I am using the ISO 4014 bolt. We've got the other ISOs 4016, 4017, 4018. 4017 I think is a screw. Um, I'd have to check the specification, but we're using 4014 in this case. Most people will be using XOX. Now look at the nut thickness when I use XOX compared to 4014. You notice in the ISO bolts the nut is thicker in the ISO standard than it is if we use just an XOX bolt. The XOX bolt it was drawn historically using a calculation, an algorithm. So the bolt would be, I can't remember off the top of my head, let's say one and a half times the bolt diameter. So it was done as a mathematical equation. Now, when we come to using ISO bolts, the nut is specified according to a standard. And in the ISO 4014 in this case, the nut is a thicker nut. You might think, well, that doesn't make a lot of difference. Well, it doesn't providing you're not getting very marginal for grip length. Because if I were to model this as an XOX bolt and I was already marginal on grip length and then I buy ISO 4014 bolts, you will find to your horror that you will run out of thread when you're putting the nut on. So the thread will not protrude outside of the nut. So I would suggest in the UK particularly that when you're modeling now, because most of the bolts you buy are going to be an ISO 4014 or what 4016 or whatever, you could fall foul of the nut thickness issue. Because you'll notice here, look, it says here nut and two washers, got a washer each side. And then if I change this to nut and washer, you'll see the bolt isn't a longer bolt. It's just I now have more grip because I've taken the washer off from this side. So you can imagine if uh, you were already marginal on grip, you'd model it as an XOX, you're going to be uh, in trouble in as much as all your bolts will be too short. So anyway, that's just an aside. Just thought I'd tell you that so you know why I use the ISO bolts. Um, we've changed the bolts. The other thing I'm going to do now is the bolts in the gusset plate. I'm going to change the number of bolts because I don't want all these bolts. And you can see number of bolts are long, two, so two and two. And the number in the oblong, so the width, two again. I'm going to change this to one. And so, sorry, let me change this back a minute. I'm going to make that zero, 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 there. Okay. Okay, so I've got these bolts now, look, two and two, two and two, except, of course, the issue I have now 
is that I'm going to have to be a pretty good welder to fill that gap. <laughs> so uh, what's controlling that, if we look on our diagram here, number six is the edge distance between the bolt and the edge of the plate. We've only got one, so it's going to be number six either side of that bolt. Number six is the edge distance. There it is, 30. Well, this is an 88 mil tube. So if I make that 50 edge distance, you can see now that the plate protrudes through the tube. So this plate, which is the tab plate, protrudes through the tube. OK. Right. Phase two. So we've got some bolts in. We've got some sandwich plates. We've got a tab plate. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to sandwich plate now. And I'm going to turn off the bolt bolts in the sandwich plate. So there I've got rid of these bolts. You'll notice the whole thing shuffled up. It doesn't need all that room anymore because there aren't any bolts. And the number of plates, I'm just going to have one on the back. So this is how we are so far. So I've turned off one of the sandwich plates. If I go to the tab plate, it says here, this is the tab plate here. If I turn that off, this one will disappear on the back. So now we're looking more akin to our required joint. Still got a couple of things to do. And one of the things I need to do is you'll notice that this plate is not centered on the tube itself, on the, on the brace. So if we go back to sandwich plate, you'll see now, if I have the, t the tab plate turned on and I go to sandwich plate, I can't center it. It's grayed out. If I go to tab plate and turn the tab plate off and go back to sandwich plate, I now have the option to center the sandwich plate. So there we go. So what it's done is offset the gusset plate. If I wanted the gusset plate on center, which invariably I would, I would just move this whole thing 10 mil and it will recenter this on the on the uh, on the column. So that's just a case of move the tube, and that makes the difference, the offset, the 10 mil. So here we are. So we'll do another couple of things on this. We'll change the slot length. That's a bit overkill. So we'll change the slot length. We'll make that 60 mil slot length. And the other thing we want to do is this distance here to here is quite big. I don't need all that. And I think if we go into uh, these settings, we're going to have to look for this one. But I know in the tab plate, although it's greyed out, it's this one here, look, number three. Because I can see there, look, see number three, that gap, number three, and that's 50 if I were to measure that. I'm sure it will be 50 mil. So if I make that 25, for instance, that closes everything up. The other thing I might want to do is invert the bolts. So we go to the bolts and the gusset plate, sorry, bolts and welds, and we can invert it. I'm going to change that to nut and washer. And there's my joint. Simple as that. <laughs> okay. So uh, it looks slightly different because if you remember, I was playing around with the properties in here. I changed that to from projection. I changed it to total. And I increased the length here. And then I changed it back. So anyhow, there's the joint. It's just a case of going through these properties. So here, for instance, we've got a cover plate. So if I wanted to bolt this to the column, I can use, uh, sorry, beg your pardon, end plate. I can use a bolted end plate. OK, there it is there. I can change the bolts, of course. End plate bolts, centered on beam, bolt parameters, blah, blah, blah. OK, so if you look through these settings. If I wanted to invert that one, I, you know, here's something I'll just uh, 
bring to your attention in a minute. If I look at these end plate bolts there, look, there's no, para there's no option to invert this. If you can't find the option to invert that in the joint, if you double click just on the bolt properties, you'll see that inverted is not greyed out. So that means I can invert the bolts from here. It says finish calculation at gap. Of course, I don't want it to do that unless I've got Fu Manchu fingers and I can get my hand down the hole. I want them to come through. So that's just one thing to remember. If you can't find the properties to adjust the bolts in the joint itself, then the properties, the parameters are going to be in the bolt properties. So let me just change this a minute. So we've got center on beam 30. I'll just move those out. Okay, so now I'm just playing. But uh, so there's our joint. That's it then, guys. As I said, because it when we look in the joints, there isn't one that says specifically this joint. It doesn't mean to say that we can't create it. We may, may need to be a bit creative in the properties of the joint. But once you get the hang of it and you know what these properties do or what they're likely to change, uh, just give it a go. Slotted holes. Uh, look. So there's plenty of things we can do in that joint. But that's it for now. If anybody has a specific request for a joint and they're not sure how to create it, send it over to me. I'll give it a bash. I'm not going to promise I can create every single joint in advance still, but I haven't come across one that I can't at least create pretty much 100%. So that's it. Thanks very much, lads and uh, ladies. And I will uh, speak to you again soon. Goodbye for now.